Okay, today we're going to look at rational expressions and functions. So let's start with what is a rational expression. And a rational expression is a ratio of two polynomials. Call the first one p of x and the second one q of x. So poly polynomial p over polynomial q. And then just remember when you have a fraction, the denominator cannot equal zero because that would be undefined. So just to remind you that anything um, divided by zero is undefined. It's not possible to divide by zero. This is saying zero times what is one, and there's nothing. On the other hand, remember, zero divided by anything is zero. Okay, so two different things there. So an example of a, of a rational expression would be x squared minus 4x over x plus 1. This is just one example of an infinite number of possibilities. So that's a, a rational expression. Polynomial x squared minus 4x over the polynomial x plus 1. Okay. So when is a rational expression undefined? We talked about this on the last slide a little bit, but basically it's undefined when the denominator equals zero, because remember we cannot divide by zero. So if you're asked to find when a rational expression is undefined um, or extraneous solutions, you're looking for when the denominator equals zero. Okay, so let's practice finding um, when the rational expressions are undefined. So let's look at A, 3 over x plus 4. It says, identify all numbers for which the following rational expressions are undefined. I'm not looking at the numerator. I'm looking at the denominator. Remember, we said it's undefined when this denominator, x plus 4, equals 0. So I set up that equation, and now I need to just solve for x. So I need to subtract 4 over to the other side and I get when x is negative 4. So this rational expression is undefined when x is negative 4. Let's do the same thing with b. Again, I'm not looking at the numerator. I'm only looking at the denominator. I want to know when this denominator, w squared minus 25, equals 0. So you can factor. This is a difference of squares. Or you can uh, add 25 over to the other side. Take the square root of both sides. Remember when you take the square root, you're going to have to put the plus or minus sign inside in front of the square root. So w equals plus or minus the square root of 25 is 5. So this is undefined when w is 5 and when w is negative 5. So there's two values for which it's undefined. Okay, so let's look at how do you simplify rational expressions. So to simplify, the first thing I just want to show you is that if you have polynomial p times r over q, that's a q, times r, and I am assuming that um, none of these are zero, right? Let me just fix this q. So r cannot be zero and p and q, can, or r cannot be zero and q cannot be zero. When I have a multiplication in between these two polynomials, I can cancel out the r's here. And I'm left with p over q. OK, so what are the steps for simplifying? First thing you want to do is factor 
the numerator and or denominator if you can. So factor the numerator and denominator. If possible, it's not always possible to be able to factor them, but if you can do that, then you look for any common factors that you can cancel. So look for any common factors that can cancel. Okay, so let's practice. I'm going to do a couple of reminders because there's a common mistake I see a lot when people are simplifying. So let me go to the next slide. Whoops. Here. Okay, it's being slow. There you go. So you can only cancel common factors that are multiplied together. just like you can cancel. So let me give you an example. If we had four times three over five times two, we could just multiply across and then simplify, but we also learn that we can cancel out um, this four and the two are both divisible by two. And this is multiplication in between here. It's not a plus or a minus sign, it's multiplication. So I can divide the four and the two by two, so four divided by two is two, two divided by two is one. And then we can go ahead and multiply across, and I get two times three is six, five times one is five, six fifths, okay? So if I come down here to x plus two times x minus three over x plus four times x minus three, the operation in between these two parentheses is multiplication. So I can cancel out this common factor of x minus 3, because it's both in the numerator and the denominator, and this will simplify to be x plus 2 over x plus 4. You cannot cancel terms that have a plus or minus sign in between them. So it has to be multiplication, and this is really important. I would highlight this right here and make sure that you remember this because I see this mistake a lot. So let me show you an example. Just like you cannot cancel 5 minus 2 over 5. So order of operations says um, that you would need to subtract your numerator first and then cancel. You cannot, so this is... Um, so you cannot cancel out these fives and say this equals negative two. That is incorrect. Okay, this actually simplifies to be, if you had five minus two oops, over five, you would need to subtract 5 minus 2 and get 3 fifths. Okay, so just be careful. You can cancel if it's plus or minus. You cannot cancel if it's... I'm sorry, you can, you can cancel if it's multiplication. You cannot just cancel across if there's a, an addition or a subtraction sign in between your two terms or numbers. So let's practice. There we go. So example um, one, let's look at A. We're going to simplify 4n minus 16 over 5n minus 20. So I cannot just go and look at this 16 and this 20 separately and cross cancel because this is not a multiplication symbol in between here. This is a subtraction symbol. So I need to do step one. Remember step one said first thing you need to do is factor, which includes pulling out the greatest common factor if you can. Um, so in the numerator, 4 and minus 16, there's a greatest common factor of 4. So I'm going to pull that out. 
and I have 4 times n minus 4. In the denominator, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull up the greatest common factor. In this case, it's a 5. So I pulled a 5, which means I'm going to divide both terms by 5, and I get n minus 4. Now that this factored, I can look for any common factors I can cancel. And notice in between this 4 and this parentheses, that's multiplication. And in between this 5 and parentheses is multiplication. So since there's multiplication between these two, I can cancel this common factor of n minus 4. And this simplifies to be 4 fifths. Okay, let's try b. We're going to do the same thing. This numerator is as simplified as it can get. I can't do anything to x minus 5, so I'm just going to rewrite it. In the denominator, I can pull out the greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor of 3x squared and 15x is a 3 and an x. So I'm going to pull that out. When I divide both by 3x, 3x squared divided by 3x is x. Negative 15x divided by 3x is negative 5. Okay, I'm going to go to cancel my like terms, and this is where you need to be careful. So I, they both have an x minus 5. So I'm going to cancel the x minus 5, and I would highlight this one to remind yourself that in the numerator, it's the numerator is not just going to disappear. Okay, so when I go to simplify this, I've basically divided x minus 5 by itself, and remember anything divided by itself is 1. And then in the denominator I have 3x. So it's 1 over 3x. A lot of times what I see as an answer is just 3x, but it is still a fraction 1 over 3x. Okay, let's try a few more examples. Let's look at C first. Here we have um, a trinomial, x squared plus 8x plus 12, that can factor. There's no number in front of x squared, I mean, except for there's the number 1 in front of x squared. And so what I'm looking for, let me do this over, is two numbers that multiply to be 12 and add to be 8. And those two numbers are 6 and 2. 6 times 2 is 12, and 6 plus 2 is 8. So I factored the numerator. When you go to factor the denominator, don't start from scratch and assume you have to always just start from the beginning. What multiplies to be negative 18 adds to be 3. This is going to be important when we start multiplying and dividing, and you have a lot more to factor. A lot of times, because these problems are set up, pretty nicely is one of your factors in the denominator is either going to be x plus 6 or x plus 2. So you have something that cancels. So look at what you have and see if one of them will work. And it looks like it's the x plus 6. Is what multiplies to be negative 18 and adds to be a positive 3 would be a positive 6 and a negative 3. So it factors to be x plus 6 times x minus 3. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18, and 6 plus negative 3 is a positive 3. So that's what it factors to be. I'm now going to cancel out my common factors of x plus 6. And so this simplifies to be x plus 2 over x minus 3. Okay, let's try the same thing with d. We're going to factor the numerator, and I need two numbers that multiply to be negative 28 and add to be a positive 3. And that would be a positive 7 and a negative 4. 7 times negative 4 is negative 28, and when you add, you get a positive 3. <coughs> Now the denominator b squared minus 49, this is a difference of squares. One of the factors is a b plus 7, and then the other one is b minus 7. So difference of squares is the terms are the same. What's different is the sign in between, and that's what cancels out those middle terms. Notice you have no b term in the middle here. 
Let's go ahead and cancel out our like factors of b plus 7. And this leaves us with b minus 4 over b minus 7. Okay, the next one, 5p minus 10 over 2 minus p, is going to be a little bit different. Um, I'm going to show you this kind of the long way, and then I'll explain a shortcut if um, you want to use it. So the first thing we're going to do is the same step, is I'm going to factor out the GCF of the numerator here. In this case, it happens to be a 5. And then I pull out a 5, I'm left with p minus 2. When I look at the denominator, it looks similar, but it's an uh, reverse, so let's flip it. Let's put the p first and then the 2. And remember, the sign is always in front of the term. So this would be a negative p and then a positive 2. So now these factors look similar, except they're opposite signs. This is a positive p, this is a negative p. I have a negative 2 in the numerator, a positive 2 in the denominator. So I'm going to take the denominator and I'm going to pull out a negative 1. So I'm going to just take out a negative 1. I need to write the 1. Let's just put the negative sign. And this is going to change the sign of both of these. So this becomes a positive p and a negative 2. Once you've done that, I now have like factors, p minus 2, that I can cancel. And now what this leaves me with is 5 over negative 1, which is negative 5. Okay, the shortcut is if you, once you're at this stage, let's say, or you can even be at this stage before, I'll write it this way, okay, is look at your term. So I would start with my p, and the numerator here is positive, and the denominator is negative, and then I would look at my other Term, I have a negative 2 in the numerator and a positive 2 in the denominator. If you have opposite signs like that, so positive p, negative p, negative 2, positive 2, and they all have to be opposite, you can't have half and half, then you know that these are the negative of each other. This is kind of like dividing 3 by negative 3, which would be 3 divided by negative 3 would be negative 1. So in this case, I'm dividing p minus 2 divided by its negative. These will cancel to divide to be negative 1. And then you would have 5 times negative 1, which is negative 5. So that's a shortcut way to look at it. If you want to see if you have um, opposite terms, just look at the signs, and then you'll know they divide to be negative 1. Otherwise, you can pull out this negative and see if it works. So either method would work fine. <coughs> Okay, let's look at one more example. So I'm going to go down to the last slide if I can get there. There we go. Okay, so the recommended percent P of oxygen in the air that a diver breathes is given by p equals 660 over d plus 33, where d is the depth in feet at which the diver is working. When is this equation undefined? <clears throat> so it's good. remember, it's undefined when the denominator is 0. So we'll just set up that equation. d plus 33 equals 0. Subtract 33 to the other side. And it's undefined when the depth is negative 33, so that means 33 feet below the surface. Two says, what is the recommended percent of oxygen at a depth of 500 feet? So that means we're plugging in 500 for D and seeing what percent we get. You can put this into your calculator all at once. Just remember, if you do, you need to do 660 divided by, and then parentheses, 500 plus 33, so that it's dividing by this whole number, not just 500. Or you could add 500 plus 33 first, and then put it into your calculator. 
when you get divide this, you should get 1.24%.